What if everything you thought you knew about Jewish origins was only part of the story? For decades, historians, archaeologists, and even theologians have debated the true roots of the Jewish people. But now, cutting-edge DNA research has finally cracked open the ancient mystery. And what scientists have found is shocking. This isn't just about religion or culture. It's about a genetic journey spanning thousands of years across continents through empires, wars, exiles, and survival. The story of Jewish DNA is not just one story. It's many. It's a mosaic of migration, resilience, and identity. And today, we're diving deep into the genetics to uncover the truth. So buckle up. Because by the end of this video, you may never look at history, or ancestry, the same way again. First, let's answer the obvious question. Can DNA really tell us about Jewish origins? Surprisingly, yes. And with shocking clarity. Geneticists began by studying various Jewish populations around the world. Ashkenazi Jews in Europe, Sephardic Jews from Spain and North Africa, Mizrahi Jews from the Middle East, Beta Israel Jews from Ethiopia, and even small isolated communities in India and China who also claim Jewish ancestry. Despite being scattered across the globe for centuries, scientists found something astonishing. Many Jewish populations share a distinct set of genetic markers. This means, no matter where Jewish communities ended up, whether in the snow-covered shtetls of Eastern Europe or the deserts of Yemen, they often carried parts of the same ancient DNA signature. But where did that signature originate? To understand that, we have to go back. Way back. The earliest genetic roots of the Jewish people trace back over 3,000 years ago to the ancient Levant. Today, that's parts of modern-day Israel, Palestine, Lebanon, Jordan, and Syria. Through DNA extracted from ancient skeletons in this region, scientists compared it to modern Jewish DNA. And the overlap was undeniable. One of the most significant pieces of evidence came from studying Y-chromosome DNA that's passed from father to son. It revealed that many Jewish men, especially from the Ashkenazi, Sephardic, and Mizrahi branches, share common paternal ancestors who lived in the Levant around 1000 BCE, right around the time of the ancient kingdom of Israel. That means the biblical stories of Abraham, Moses, and King David may not just be tales of faith, but echoes of a very real genetic lineage. But that's only half the story. To get the full picture, scientists also looked at mitochondrial DNA, which is passed down from mothers to their children. This maternal DNA tells a story that is both similar and different. While the paternal lines strongly trace back to the ancient Levant, the maternal lines are more varied. For example, in Ashkenazi Jews, the mitochondrial DNA often traces to European women, again, pointing to the blending that happened during early migrations into Europe. Meanwhile, in Sephardic and Mizrahi communities, maternal lines often remain more Middle Eastern, reflecting different migration patterns and levels of assimilation. So from both father and mother, a diverse but deeply connected picture emerges. And here's where it gets even more interesting. When researchers compared Jewish DNA to that of ancient neighboring populations, like the Canaanites, Phoenicians, and early Arab tribes, they discovered shared ancestry markers. This reveals that the ancient Jewish population didn't develop in total isolation. They were part of a complex web of tribes and cultures in the Levant, all interacting, intermarrying, and evolving side by side. In many ways, ancient Jewish DNA is both unique and part of a larger regional tapestry. But the story doesn't stay in the Levant. Over the centuries, war, empire, and persecution forced Jewish populations to scatter. First came the Assyrians, then the Babylonians, the Persians, the Greeks, and finally the Romans. Each wave brought exile. And with every exile, the Jewish people carried their DNA to new lands. When Rome destroyed the Second Temple in Jerusalem in 70 CE, thousands of Jews were enslaved and taken to Rome. Others fled east, south, and across the Mediterranean. This launched one of the most widespread and resilient diasporas in human history. And still, the DNA stayed remarkably consistent. While Jewish communities adopted different languages, foods, and customs based on their new homes, 
the core genetic signature remained. And here's where it gets even more fascinating. One of the most studied Jewish populations is the Ashkenazi Jews, who settled primarily in Central and Eastern Europe. When scientists sequenced the full genomes of Ashkenazi individuals, they found something curious. About 50 to 60 percent of their ancestry traced back to the Middle East. But the remaining portion? It came from Europe, specifically Southern Europe, likely from Italian or Greek populations. So what happened? It turns out that during the early centuries of Jewish settlement in Europe, there was intermarriage and conversion. Jewish men from the Middle East likely migrated to Europe and took local women as wives, some converts, some not. Over time, this created a unique genetic blend, a Middle Eastern paternal line and a European maternal line. This explains why mitochondrial DNA, passed down from mothers, in Ashkenazi Jews is predominantly European. In essence, Ashkenazi Jews are living proof of how cultures and genes can blend, adapt, and survive through history. But there's another fascinating clue to this blend. Language. Yiddish, the traditional language of Ashkenazi Jews, is a unique fusion of German, Hebrew, Aramaic, and Slavic influences. It reflects the physical and cultural movement of Jews through Europe. Just as their DNA absorbed traces of the people they encountered, so did their language. Language, like genetics, evolves through contact, isolation, and adaptation. It becomes yet another map of the Jewish journey through time and space. But this blending and isolation also had a darker side. Because Ashkenazi Jews lived in relatively closed communities for centuries, a phenomenon called the founder effect took place. This means that certain genetic traits, both good and bad, became amplified over generations. As a result, Ashkenazi Jews today have a higher risk for certain inherited diseases, like Tay-Sachs, Gaucher's disease, and some forms of breast cancer. But this also helped scientists trace the genetic bottlenecks in their history. Researchers believe the Ashkenazi population may have descended from just a few hundred individuals around 700 to 800 years ago, a time marked by wars, plagues, and massacres. And yet, despite the hardships, the genetic signature persisted. Interestingly, this genetic concentration also had a silver lining. Because specific diseases were more common in Ashkenazi Jews, researchers were able to study these conditions in greater depth. This has led to major medical breakthroughs, including new treatments, genetic screening, and early detection programs. In some ways, Jewish DNA not only tells a story of the past, it helps shape the future of medicine. While Ashkenazi Jews became prominent in Europe, other Jewish groups remained closer to the ancient homeland. Mizrahi Jews, who stayed in the Middle East, and Sephardic Jews, who settled in Spain, North Africa, and later the Ottoman Empire, also preserved the Levantine genetic core. Studies show that many of these groups share more genetic similarity with each other than with their non-Jewish neighbors. This consistency across continents suggests a shared ancestry that goes back thousands of years. Even languages spoken by Sephardic and Mizrahi Jews, like Ladino, Judeo-Spanish, and Judeo-Arabic, hold the memory of centuries-old migrations. They fused local tongues with Hebrew roots, reflecting how Jewish identity remained intact even while immersed in foreign cultures. What about the Jews of Ethiopia, known as Beta Israel? or the Benei Minashi of India, or the Kaifeng Jews of China. These communities have fascinating histories and oral traditions connecting them to ancient Israel. But genetically, the picture is mixed. Some members of Beta Israel show Middle Eastern ancestry, but much of their DNA matches neighboring Ethiopian populations, suggesting a blend of ancient Jewish migrants and local converts. The Benei Minashi also show genetic links to East Asian populations, with only hints of possible Middle Eastern markers. As for the Kaifeng Jews of China, their DNA today is almost entirely Chinese, likely due to centuries of intermarriage. Still, their customs, rituals, and stories kept the memory of Jewish identity alive, even when the DNA faded. This raises a fascinating question. Is identity purely genetic? The answer, scientists and historians agree, is no. 
Identity is shaped by shared memory, belief, tradition, and culture. While DNA can reveal roots, it can't explain faith, community, or resilience. These outlier groups are reminders that being Jewish was never just about blood, it was also about belonging. So what does all this mean? The genetics are clear. Most Jewish populations today, especially Ashkenazi, Sephardic, and Mizrahi, share common ancient roots in the Levant. But the story doesn't stop at the DNA. What makes Jewish identity so unique is not just a shared genome, but a shared story. A story of exile and return, loss and resilience, memory and adaptation. DNA may reveal where we come from, but it's culture, tradition, and survival that show who we are. And in the case of the Jewish people, both the genes and the journey are nothing short of extraordinary. And this journey continues. Genetic research is still uncovering surprises. New technologies, like ancient DNA extraction and large-scale genome comparison, are painting an even clearer picture of the Jewish past. Some recent studies have found previously unknown branches of the Jewish genetic tree, communities long forgotten or hidden by time. Others are exploring how Jewish DNA interacts with genes of other populations, revealing long-lost connections across the ancient world. We're only just beginning to understand the full story written in our chromosomes. So the next time someone tells you history is written in books, remind them, it's also written in blood. In chromosomes. In the code of life itself. The Jewish DNA story is far from over. New studies are coming out every year, uncovering even more about this ancient people's journey. And who knows? Maybe your own DNA holds secrets that connect you to this story, too. If this video opened your eyes, hit that like button, subscribe for more mind-blowing discoveries, and share this with someone who loves history and science. Thanks for watching, and remember, your past is never as far away as you think.